Hey guys, hope you're doing well out there. Time to take a look at Visa Incorporated after they reported their Q1 results after the bell they beat on both the top line and bottom line. We'll jump into the outlook for this upcoming Q2. We'll take a look at the quarters up ahead, see really what the expectations are for Visa. We'll take a look at how the cash is flowing over at this business. One of those companies on Wall Street that basically every dollar that Visa earns, they return to you, the shareholder, in one way or another. We'll jump into the financials and then as always, We'll take a look at this one from a chart perspective. Basically has been making a very predictable and very beautiful uptrend. We'll highlight some levels where I think you can be a buyer in shares of Visa. As always, if you are new to the channel and find this type of content valuable, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button below. It would be much appreciated. Let's not waste any more time and jump into these Q1 results. Visa shares trading down nearly two and three quarters percent, closer to $265 a share. You can pull up a stock chart of Visa stretch it out really over any length of time. And this has never not been a buy. And really, as we walk through today's results, you'll basically come to the same conclusion that any major dip in shares of Visa are always pretty much a buying opportunity. Now, revenues in this Q1, this was Visa's Q1. So October, November, December was Q1 2024. Revenues coming in at $8.6 billion. That was good for 8.9% growth on a year over year basis. Beat Wall Street expectations by right around $50 million, and then non-GAAP EPS coming in at $2.41, that also coming in with a beat on Wall Street expectations. Now those $2.41 of EPS was a growth rate of roughly 11%, so when you see revenues growing 9%, and then your net income growing basically right in line with that at 8%, you basically know this company is ultra efficient. Almost dollar for dollar of your revenues flow all the way down the funnel to your net income, basically nothing, almost nothing gets stripped off. And then your EPS grows at an even faster clip than your revenues, and that is because of their massive share repurchase. Visa buying back roughly $4.4 billion, pardon me, that also includes their dividends paid out. And so EPS growing at a faster clip than your revenues, that is lovely to see. This company just extremely efficient, extremely lean, not a ton of operating and capital expenditures. And that is why it's got tremendous margins and really why you always pay a premium for a company like this in the markets. Now, in terms of Q2 guidance, Visa guided for upper mid to high single digit growth on that revenue side and then EPS expecting to grow in the high teens for this upcoming Q2. If we look ahead on Wall Street expectations, they were basically right in line with 8.5% revenue growth coming over in Q2 and then EPS growth right around 12%. So low teens on that EPS side and then mid to high single digit on those revenue side. So Visa guiding basically in line with Wall Street expectations. If we look ahead to the entire 2024 year, low double digit growth, both on the top and bottom line estimates on Wall Street, basically right in line with that EPS expected to grow at roughly 12 and percent for the full year 2024, bringing their forward price earnings right around 28 times. So in my opinion, actually quite reasonable for a company this predictable in terms of revenues, in terms of earnings for a company this efficient and this well run. Yeah, 28 times a forward price to earnings multiple, not overly expensive over at Visa, believe it or not. And then from a price to sales does trade certainly rich on a price to sales basis closer to 15 times. But again, I would keep in mind with a price to sales like this, you know Visa has extremely good margins. And basically, as we saw almost dollar for dollar on your revenues, they flow down to your net income and then your EPS. And so really on a price to sales, if this company trades rich, that's for a reason because they are able to translate a lot of those revenue dollars all the way to net income dollars. Now, Wall Street had revenue expectations right around 10% growth for Visa. So as they guide it to low double digits, coming in just a shade higher than revenue expectations on Wall Street. Taking a look at their free cash flow now in this most recent quarter, Visa generating roughly $3.3 billion worth of free cash flow. That's not for an entire year. That is for three months. That's basically a run rate of $1.1 billion a month in terms of free cash flow. That is just incredible to see. You see net cash provided by operating activities coming in at $3.6 billion. And then you take away your CapEx at just a shade over $250 million and you get free cash flows of 3.3. You see just how lean this business is. Not a very capital intensive business at all. And so from those $3.3 billion of free cash flow, 
they basically bought back nearly dollar for dollar of their common stock and then paid out another billion dollars in dividends. And so this company is sitting on over $21.4 billion worth of cash and cash equivalents. That was as of December 31st. And so you see this company is absolutely cash loaded to the sky. They're paying out those in dividends. And then basically their free cash flow, they're returning to you dollar for dollar, as we said, in the form of share buybacks. Very efficient and honestly, one of the best companies in terms of shareholder friendliness you are getting exactly what you are investing for when you buy shares in Visa. You're basically getting your money back and then a little bit more on top. Now taking a look at the income statement, this company from a revenue growth perspective, not the most exciting. It certainly isn't extremely high revenue growth of 20, 30%, but I think what you get with Visa is extremely stable revenue growth, very predictable. And to that you pay a premium to in the market, absolutely. If you can easily predict the revenues and the earnings for a company, that is something Wall Street absolutely loves and something generally all investors love just because it's easy to predict where the business is headed in the near future and you absolutely, again, pay a premium for that. And so you saw your service revenues grow 11%, coming in at $3.9 billion, data processing revenues growing up to $4.3 billion. That was good for 14% growth and then international transaction revenues growing at 8%. The real growth driver over at Visa, as they highlighted in their key business drivers in this most recent quarter, was that cross-border payment travels. And so you see cross-border excluding intra-Europe and even cross-border total volume up 16% on a constant currency basis, up nearly 20% on a nominal basis. And so this certainly bodes well, even for the airlines. You can sort of extrapolate that higher cross-border spend over at Visa in the holiday quarter really probably is a good thing for travel overall and likely will probably bode fairly well for the airlines, especially on their revenue side. Now, when it comes to non-GAAP operating expenses, those coming in at $2.6 billion, that was 7% growth year over year. And then from $8.6 billion worth of net revenues, we generate $4.9 billion in non-GAAP net income. That is absolutely incredible. That was a growth of 8% year over year. And then as we saw, EPS coming in 11% higher at $2.41. We've covered Visa on the channel before, and as you see, not a whole lot has changed, but I think that's exactly what there is to love about this business. Extremely predictable and efficient. When it comes to their balance sheet, looking all good over at Visa, sitting on roughly $13.5 billion worth of cash and cash equivalents. This is on a quarter over quarter picture, not really changing all that much, ticking down roughly $3 billion on a quarter over quarter perspective, but total or current assets coming in line with $32.7 billion. Total assets of over $91 billion, and they're sitting on just $22.6 billion in current liabilities and then $51.6 in total liabilities. So from a balance sheet, all things looking good, very cash loaded as we saw. They're paying off those dividends basically out of pocket as their free cash flow essentially is canceled out in terms of share repurchases. As we'll see that right here on their statement of cash flows, we have that 4.9, nearly $4.9 billion worth of net income on a year over year. That's right around $800 million higher. And then net cash provided by operating activities after we add back some incentives, stock-based comp, and then depreciation, we get to operating activities, cash flows, of $3.6 billion year over year, that is down roughly $500 million. Looks like the majority of that is due to an accrued litigation charge. Last year, they got a benefit of roughly $250 million in the same quarter. Now they took a charge of roughly $250 million. And so that's where that difference really comes to show. And then in terms of investing activities, again, we saw capital intensive activities, not a whole lot, just $267 million worth of CapEx and so you get nearly $3.3 billion worth of operating, pardon me, worth of free cash flows. Of that, they bought back roughly $3.6 billion worth of common stock. That share buyback actually accelerated on a year over year. Last year, they were buying back roughly $3.1 billion. And then again, those dividends also accelerating higher. Even though share counts are decreasing, you see they paid out more in dividends. And so that means Visa likely did a dividend hike from a year ago. And so with this company, not only are you getting consistent and aggressive share buybacks, you're also getting a dividend bump up likely year after year. And you know that can continue in the near future, sitting on roughly $22 billion worth of cash, cash equivalents, and short-term investment. So again, this company, from a financial perspective, extremely strong, very healthy, very efficient, as we've said. And from a financial and fundamental perspective, there's really nothing to dislike about Visa. The only thing is where you come in here and pick up your shares. You ideally want to get the best price possible in order to maximize your returns. And so Visa coming into these earnings really rallied, setting up 
at the top end of this range, really even breaking out over it. Now it is coming back down closer to $265 a share. I'll put in this fake red candle to kind of show you where shares are trading in the after hours basically meeting the upper end of this channel. Could get some support at this level from just a technical perspective, but really I expect Visa to come in here and sort of trade sideways to downwards over the next little bit. Really, I would expect this one to retrace near the lower end of this channel down to $240 a share, we'll call it. I think that is your first level to buy Visa shares. You absolutely pick up a company like this in an uptrend, especially when it pulls back to a level where technically it would make a ton of sense. And then as we looked at the financials, as we look at the, at the fundamentals, nothing to really dislike about this company. You want to pick it up on these major dips within an uptrend. That is absolutely where you want to be accumulating shares of Visa. Really any dip you can inch into this one and basically increase your position over a long period of time. And really as it gets to the upper end of this range, no real reason to sell it in my opinion. I think that's when you can hold off on buying shares and kind of just ride out your gain. But really no real reason to sell shares of Visa. This one is a compounder. This one is one you let sit in your portfolio, you reinvest those dividends, you let them buy back their common stock, and then you let them appreciate your capital in a pretty substantial way. You can pull up a 10-year, 20-year chart of this one and it paints the same story. Every dip has been a buy the dip opportunity for Visa. I expect this one to be just the same and then I expect it to come in here closer to $240 a share. That is, I think, your first level to pick up shares of Visa. All things looking phenomenal. The consumer is looking very healthy. You see cross-border travel and spend really increase. We also had MasterCard's earnings after the bell. I'm guessing a similar story painted by MasterCard, another one of those companies that loves to buy back shares and loves to compound your dividends. Visa, I think, is no different and I think a top class stock in the markets. That was my take on Visa Incorporated. Let me know your thoughts on this one in the comment section below. Are you coming in here and picking up shares of Visa at the current dip, basically at $265 a share? That is really where the stock is trading in the after hours. Let me know your thoughts on this one in the comment section below. We'll be back again next week with a boatload of tech earnings, including Apple, Meta, Microsoft, I believe Amazon as well and a whole lot more. Stay tuned on this channel. Hit that like and subscribe button below if you enjoy content like this. Thanks so much for listening and I'll catch you guys in the next video.